A look at Barcelona's January transfer window. We've already seen these players making a big difference and a big impact on Xavi's Barcelona so far. And uh, there could be talk of another big name player coming in at Barcelona. We're bringing in Gemma Soler from Barcelona to talk more about this. Uh, Gemma, I suppose it's where you're reading your papers at the moment. If you're reading your newspapers in Catalonia, you're seeing Erling Haaland's name plastered all over and the belief that perhaps Xavi can convince the player to sign for Barcelona. What can you tell us? Hola, Kay. Yeah, well, it's going to be, it's in the digitals already, it's going to be in all the covers tomorrow. And I think for Barcelona, if we remember not so long time ago, uh, when the season started, uh, just eating at the same table uh, with uh, Holland uh, or even his uh, representative, Mino Rayola, it's already a triumph. Just trying to pursue him because now they have the, the, the sportive attractive, I think, to try to sell a project because, of course, Barcelona is not the, the best team in an economical position to try to sign him. So, yeah, there was a trip on Tuesday uh, to Munich uh, and, and there was a meeting with Johan, uh, with Jordi Cruyff and uh, with uh, Xavi trying to convince him, selling him the, the how would that team be with him, all the attractive Barcelona with all the youngsters and the new signings and with a coach who has an idea and how he needs a number nine and, and how that he could be the leader like it happened some years ago with Ronaldinho or later with uh, Messi. So this this is the, the, big, the biggest asset Barcelona has for Haaland in, in trying to, to win this auction. Uh, if, if you ask for my opinion, I, I think this is it's not impossible. Barcelona is able to do the operation. They are offering 190 million euros. They, they could go back to the CBC agreement. There are, uh, they can have a, a loan. They could work it, but I think it will be crazy for this team with all the, the economical problems, with the stadium that needs to be uh, reconstructed. I think it's a, uh, crazy because, yes, they could do that operation, but they need to build a team. They need to build a new team. They need to renew Gabi. Uh, what happens if Pedri is in the Ballon d'Or uh, candidate? So they need to pay more money. So I think it's a crazy uh, idea. But of course, they want to be there in case uh, he believes in that uh, team and he wants to go uh, in Barcelona for less money than what Manchester City or uh, we will see what happens with uh, uh, Mbappé if Real Madrid decides to, to turn to his interest to Holland. Yeah, a crazy idea it could be, Jules, but what do you think? Could you see it materialising? Well, I think it's not so crazy. It's more a very expensive idea because, as we mentioned already on the show, this is this is a deal that is worth around 300 million euros overall between the, the release clause and the transfer fee, the wages on the length of the contract, all the commissions for Raiola and for Alfie Haaland as well. This will cost a lot of money. Of course, they can try to convince him. Of course, they should. Of course, they should go and see him and speak to him and dis discuss a potential move for him and how he will play in the team. And imagine having Xavi coming and knocking at your door and you open the door and it's Xavi. And, OK, this is a wow, a big wow factor. Uh, of course, they should be there. It's, there's a big difference between going there and trying to convince him than actually sign him signing the contract. There's a long way to go. We know there's a lot of other big, big clubs in Europe who maybe have more money than Barcelona, who also have uh, a lot of incentive to try to convince him to, to join them. So this will be a battle. I think it's, it's really interesting to see what Barca are doing right now. We know that Frank Kessier is top of the list. We know that Andreas Christensen, two free agents, is also top of the list. We know, we know that Gaia is another one that they would like to, to strengthen a left back. And then the big money move, the marquee signing, will be Erling Haaland. But again, the others are far easier to do compared to the Norwegian. Uh, well, we've seen some very interesting quotes today from Dutch newspaper AD from former Barcelona coach Ronald Koeman, who says it was the insistence of the club's hierarchy that I agreed to the departure of certain players. But when you see that they signed someone for 55 million euro, it makes you wonder if something else was happening. Why did Messi have to leave? He also says, Barcelona didn't give me the same time as Xavi. I was working with many injured players. Now Pedri is back in shape, Usman Dembele's back. Every coach needs time and patience from the board. Laporta told me a thousand times that Xavi would not be his coach because he lacked experience.
Gemma, what's been the reaction to these quotes back in Barcelona? Well, uh, there was a little bit of surprise. Uh, even what happened with Ronald Koeman, he's still a respected figure here in Barcelona. So, uh, but, but it's so different how, how the, the team has changed uh, with Xavi's arrival. I agree with him with almost everything, that um, he was unlucky with injuries. Uh, he was not Laporta's coach. He had to deal with a lot of ugly things, like having to sack uh, Suarez, having to deal with Messi's tragic, traumatic departure. And he behaved like a, a club man. And, and I think that the, his sacking was uh, not very respectful from Joan Laporta. I agree, agree with Almost everything, not about the timing, because, of course, he had more time than uh, Xavi. He was a year and four months. Xavi has been a little bit less, uh, a little more than 100 days in, in charge. And I also agree, because this is true, we know that Xavi was not the first choice for Joan Laporta. He thought he was an unexperimented coach. He actually offered him to coach the B team. Meanwhile, he, he was trying to get Tuchel, clean uh, some coach that everyone said no because it was so difficult coming to, to Barcelona. So I agree with everything, but the, the complaining point, and, and we saw that so many times in Barcelona. Kuman was always complaining, and I, I think that also was a reason why the fans were a little bit tired of him, apart that the team was playing ugly. He was always complaining about the referees, about the injuries, about uh, even blaming some players. So he's doing that again. I, I think he has some reason because his sacking was uh, quite ugly, could have been done with more class, I think, in, in Barcelona. And this marriage of uh, Laporta and Kuman was always uh, a convenient one. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.